Hi, today we will have a look at this vintage Soviet avionics test panel for either gyro compass or radio compass. It is from the mid 60s and it is a recent eBay purchase. So it can, comes in a sweet case uh, kind of package. I am missing here obviously the cover which must contain all the uh, interconnect wires to connect to the equipment you want to test. And also when I received it, I was missing the lights here. But luckily I was able to find some in my stock. And also to purchase the missing ones on eBay. They are not uh, very cheap, but now I have a good uh, stock of them. I believe it is the model of light you find on the Antonov 2 dashboard. Also, I am missing here still four fuse holders. They are a weird unusual model and so far I have not been able to locate a new stock one on eBay and either even to uh, identify the correct model number. I did Indeed, purchase some from eBay new stock also, but they are not the correct one, they are too small. So it is a large kind like this, but uh, no luck here, I am still missing these parts. Okay, so about this panel, you can see we have here a probably power supply input. Here interconnects to the equipment you want to test. Some of them are plugged with a kind of terminators. We will have a better look at them later. Uh, status lights. Uh, this is actually some kind of uh, remote control with a cable you can pull out of the case and use remotely. And it will connect to this plug here. So it is my second uh, test panel of this kind. I already have a smaller one, but with, in fact I did expect this one to be the same size, but obviously not. It is much uh, bigger. So you use it like this remotely apparently to track the position of the instrument you want to test or the equipment. Uh, we have a number of buttons with uh, no label about what they do. You are just a button number and a position number, so I need, you need really the uh, user manual to be able to do anything. We have galvanometer readout here, uh, some kind of master radio or zero compass readout here, and this very interesting device. Okay, now we will have a closer look to the parts here. Okay, uh, here is the top left corner with the four missing fuse holders, main power switch here I believe, the lights I was able to find. About this switch here, I am suspicious, it might actually be radium in the front. No. Okay, it is good. Then, galvanometer. Do we have a manufacturing date here? No. You can see it goes to uh, 4 amps, 40 volts in continuous, and 4 amps, 4 volts in alternative mode. V. Famous readout and all the plugs so they, some of them came with a custom terminator plug mm. Mm. quite hard to do we've actually ah, excuse me it will come eventually so it is just a, a plug with inside uh, jumper wires, nothing to see inside. But you can see there is the uh, plug number matching here, the one you are supposed to connect it to when it is not in use, this plug. And we have a cyan number here which is matching the cyan number of the device. 
so quite interesting I got only three of these plugs here we have the main attachment of the panel to the case to uh, take it apart I will have to undo the, for, uh, the, the nut here and it will lift out very simple more plugs on the top here and here excuse me the main interest device and it is actually for this device in particular I was interested in purchasing the panel uh, I was hoping it to be some kind of uh, analog calculator thing computing thing not sure exactly what it is you have one setting like this and one like this that will turn the two over dials so there is not much inside, it is already have a look, it is mostly a synchro transmitter and a tracking potentiometer, not much. Okay, so you get the ID. Now I will uh, uh, put it flat on the bench and start to take it apart. So excuse me for the framing of the video, it is not very convenient to work on this thing because it is too big for my bench so I have just four nuts to unscrew and I will be able to lift the whole panel and reveal what we have inside so it is in fact mostly wires there is not a lot of electronics but still some interesting stuff and interesting details so are you ready? it is super heavy uh, how to do maybe I will get the box out of the way so you first like this yes so here you get the idea of the contents uh, very nice uh, wire looms in this area I had to un re redo all the cable lacing because it was all it was all gone for some reason all these boxes are just uh, wafer rotary switches in a shielded box. No more, no particular electronics inside. Here we have the back of a weird uh, unit, the back of a big indicator. And uh, here is the area of the galvanometer, the uh, power supply section here. And it is. Uh, well, it is well. A good uh, overview. One weird thing about this area here, you cannot ice. There is a dark spot. Two missing screws. No proof of anything was installed previously. These two screws are to attach the capacitor on the back, so it is normal they are there. About this dark spot, I guess maybe it was a rubber part in the cover of a case pressing against the plate here and it did transfer some color to this area most probably it is what happened okay now i will install the camera overhead and we will have detail look But before I forget, here you have the model and serial number of the device. Very uh, damaged label, sadly. And here you have uh, mountings in the case. So they are rubber shock absorbers with a screw part here that is uh, bolted to the panel. As you can see, it will uh, have some uh, liberty of movement. It is attached to the case with a die cast aluminium bracket. So we will start by having a look at the uh, remote uh, indicator part, remote selector or whatever you want to call it. 
It is just an escape button that will turn an indicator dial here onto a 360 degrees scale, so perfectly matching a compass device. We have a big plug here, a few meters wire, something like this, in a rubber coating, a little bit moldy. Here is the remains of the manufacturer plate on this, sadly, not much to see. This unit is in bad condition because it was uh, carried around by the user probably when testing the equipment. So if I undo this cover, we have what seems to be a quite uh, basic, uh, probably uh, synchro transmitter setup with maybe a photosimeter and so I see calls I see rotary contacts here that will uh, wipe on the, on the rotary part we have uh, unknown components here in uh, each ring I believe they might be glass body diodes Terminals here, uh, you can see the mix of wires we have inside this cable. We have a thin Teflon coated wires, we have thick um, rubber coated wires or PVC, and we have shielded wires with uh, copper shielding. And I can see big uh, windings here, big calls, copper calls for some kind of. Uh, Synchro transmitter device. So it will not take this further apart because it seems to be quite delicate. It should require to pop out the glass, which is already in bad condition, by the way, and undo the needle indicator in order to undo the screws here. I do not want to damage it anymore. It is already damaged. But here we can have a look at this weird box on the cable. Actually, you can see there is a add-on box in uh, aluminium if I can find uh, a screwdriver of the correct size hopefully I will be able to do one half here and open it and see what we have Okay, some felt uh, gap filler here for the cable, and okay, it is not tight. There is a serial number matching apparently V1 on the well, handwritten indication matching this, not the serial number here. And if I unscrew this. What do we have? Okay. We have what seems to be uh, two toroidal calls or transformers, or maybe current transformers. Interesting. Two, no, two or maybe, no, yes, two of them with a rubber uh, washer separating them. Quite weird. And more uh, washers here. Well set up. Okay, I will put this back together and we will go to the main unit. Okay, I will do my best to show you the most uh, possible amount of details on this thing, but you can see it is very large and not easy at all to work on. Uh, we will start with the power input area. We have a big uh, backlight plate here, or actually some kind of early epoxy. Seems to be a glass fiber base or something like this, with two power diodes at least. And it is hiding the interesting area of the fuse holders, which I want to be able to locate spare ones 
so I will quickly unscrew this plate for you. So what do we have? Two old school uh, power diodes D303 made in 1964. It is written here, you cannot see. Trust me, it is written. Ah, yeah, maybe you can see. With a very nice uh, manufacturer logo here. I will zoom in for you. So it is at the corner of your, of your screen, but you can see it. Okay. And here we have regular oil paper capacitor. The uh, back bodies of the light indicators, which are the model number for those playing at home. This in Cyrillic. S L whatever letter dash seventy seven. So if you search this uh, Cyrillic letters on uh, eBay or you translate them into regular letters, you will find the path. There is a few sellers having them in stock. Uh, so main switch here. The uh, fuel solders, they are this kind of uh, weird shape at the back with a uh, buckle light uh, uh, ring nut, you can see. So, so far I was not able to find them. And uh, there is no model number written on them, sadly. Big switch here with screw on contacts, and you can see the uh, diodes here actually have some kind of uh, heat sink uh, aluminium ring. Okay, I will reinstall this and we will go to the next area. Uh, here we just have one transformer mounted on. Uh, standoffs. Also here behind this uh, plate a little transformer. You can see this. But here we have something more interesting with luckily enough just two screws keeping it in place it seems. They seem to be brass screw this one for some reason. We have a set of uh, wire wound resistors stacked like this, you can see, with also this very old school one. Nothing else. Oh, it is very typical here, you can see, they did uh, apply some uh, red paint or uh, lacquer or whatever you want to call it, nail varnish, on the solder points. but. Here in the heat shrink, it did actually migrate in the heat shrink, and the heat shrink became uh, fluorescent pink. It is quite common to see it in Soviet equipment actually. Always the same red color on the solders, and it migrates in the heat shrink. But here it looks like the bluish green from the uh, Cables did also migrate inside the heat shrink. Quite uh, interesting detail to notice. So, excuse me, I am trying to reinstall this screw and we will go to the next part. Okay, magics of video editing. So, this we will keep for the last. Uh, here we have the uh, back of the galvanometer. So what do we have in here? Apparently it is just three screws this time. But I believe, or maybe just two even. And I believe we have something interesting. This one was completely loose by the way. So if I lift this, no luck because the cables are actually too short. Uh, we have the same kind of uh, excuse me a bit yes stack of uh, 
where you want resistor as you can see here here we have uh, resistor coils here like springs of uh, fat uh, wires so maybe it is some current something or something like this we have the back of the galvanometer which is actually made of a uh, metal plate it is not uh, very usual so i cannot get this out of the way because of the wires which are very short there is a weather device here that i would love to show you but it will not be possible it is a black cylinder maybe like this it's a little bit it is a black backlight thing i believe it is a selenium rectifier if i unscrew it i am not sure i will be able to reinstall it properly sadly you can see everything is very much tied together and not easy to access and it will be even worse about the big main indicator because sadly i already know i will not be able to show you the insides why why because actually you can see the wire loom is completely in the way of the cover so even if i unscrew the cover i will not be able to pull it uh, further back enough to show you the contents and the george comes back from comes off from the front of the device so without cutting the wires i can really do nothing there is a at least a model on serial number here you can see so very small serial numbers not common so this must be a pretty rare item we have here uh, some kind of potentiometer with a locking nut here the area where i did redo all the wire loom uh, uh, cable assing with more or less success but it was completely gone so i believe it is not too bad uh, here i will try to show you inside one of these things so for this i need to undo the back light button try to at least if i find the gap the slot in the screw okay then i have to grab a wrench and try to undo the nut okay not too bad it should allow me to here pull the wall device excuse me for the framing again yes like this okay and then i should be able to remove the cover yes and you can see what we have in here just a big ceramic wafer switch nothing in particular but now i have to be able to reinstall this thing in its correct location and it will be fun so we'll be right back I am back with the main area of interest, this device, I did already unscrew the, from the front. Uh, I had a look inside the front part previously, it is just a few girls, nothing uh, interesting, but in the back at least, I will be able to show you what we have, so I had to separate it from the panel because of the very short wire loom if i want to be able to pull out the cover actually i need to have some room to slide out the cover and uh, if there was here a seal over this screw i did undo myself okay so if i do this and this 
I am at least able to show you a little bit. We have uh, rotary contacts things here and here. Here seems to be a synchro receiver or transmitter, whatever you want to call it. Yes, it is written uh, type A, 400 Hz. Here, and you can see two wires and probably three wires here. So it is a synchro device. Probably, yes, here. Uh, Wiper, uh, wire wound resistor with uh, wiper, wiper, so pot tracking potentiometer, you can see. And probably more of the same kind of stuff in here. As we have wires going in this part. Yes, probably a larger one here. Quite similar, I guess, to what we have inside this. But it seems very delicate and I do not want to mess up anything, so I will not take it apart further, sadly. As you will understand, it is very rare to find items so quite uh, unexpected device. So I have no idea of what it does, some kind of tracking or calculation or something like this. Thanks to the front uh, dial, you will adjust something. No ID. So there is obviously some uh, things here you could try to translate, probably, I guess. But very nice uh, dials in the front. They are just a disc onto gears, nothing else. No, not even a backlight inside this. Okay, so you get the ID. Uh, what else I can show you? It is almost everything inside. In fact, more of the same uh, stuff everywhere. Some uh, terminals here mounted on these plates with little uh, labels. Uh, very thick uh, wire harness. At the bottom, here and here, some wires are uh, shielded with uh, tinned copper braids, and it is all a uh, big grounding bus bar here. Apparently, you can see where all the uh, shieldings of the copper coax wires go. And connect it to the front panel and to the case of the connectors. And apart from this, it is all sadly. I guess we have beautiful stuff inside here, but as you can see, it is not possible to do anything without uh, actually cutting the wires and the missing with uh, nuts here all at the bottom which would be quite impossible to reach in particular this one here if i undo this i have no idea of how i'll be able to reinstall this so this uh, thing will keep its mystery okay i will put this back together and try to find somewhere to place it in my storage so thanks for watching bye bye